Hello all, welcome to my channel Codify with Sonal. Today I will be covering the AWS Cloud Practitioner uh, tutorial with the help of real exam questions. This is the part 2. Uh, if you want to check out part 1, I'll put the link in the i button above and as well as in the description box. You can ch check it out. So let's start. First question for uh, this session is, uh, which AWS services can be used to connect the AWS cloud and on-premise resources? So you have some uh, data in your on-premise resource and you have it in AWS. How will you connect those? So let's see each options one by one. What is AWS managed services? So managed services is like a complete package of enabling, building, and my operating to help you adopt AWS, help your business to adopt AWS. So what happens in enablement is that it will create a baseline. And as you can see, like here in the diagram, that it picks up input one by one and tries to process it in the next step. It tries to understand that what can be the fastest way to uh, integrate, develop and migrate your workloads. And then finally, it starts it opera its operations, which gives you uh, operational outcome and which benefits you with all these points like integrate improved security focus uh, in aut focus on automation then stronger compliance reduced operating cost simplified management and frictionless innovation so from the exam point of view you really need to understand the services uh, better like how it works and in what scenario you how you want to use it okay so let's see the next one that is AWS managed VPN. So this is what uh, the Amazon VPC. Okay, uh, one thing, the all the images what I have taken, I have taken uh, from AWS uh, documentation. So uh, I'll put the link down in the description box. You guys can check if you want to read more about it. So now coming to AWS managed VPN. So this is what this is like uh, in Amazon. We everything inside a vpc okay in aws so inside vpc you have az's what is az az is a data center okay so you can have two or more data centers okay so this is my one ac this is my second az they have vpc subnet one subnet two and ec2 ec2 we saw last time it's a compute uh virtual computer okay then here you have a virtual pri private gateway is a part of your VPC which gets a IP secured internet protocol secured uh, connection to your on-premise location which has a customer gateway through which it is attached. So virtual private gateway gets attached to the uh, through the IPsec to customer gateway is one way to connect with your aws cloud and to your on-premise location so as in the question we saw we need two correct answers so this is one of them now coming to cloud hsm so cloud hsm is basically when you want to encrypt your uh, cryptographic operations you want to perform on your key management and all cloud hsm provisions and manage your own single tenant hsm hsm is hardware security models to generate and use your own encryption keys and how it monitors it monitors using cloudwatch and provisions uh, audit logs to provision backup and restore hsm to upload it to the customer account this all it does by the cloud trail service so next coming to direct connect so what is direct connect direct connect allows a customer a business basically to establish a dedicated network connection between your location and your office or your business data center next coming to amazon connect so amazon connect is a package of agent and managers agent has the effective tool in one ui to deliver productive uh, customer conversation manager is like an machine learning powered contact center where you can set up your call quickly and if you want to make changes in minutes not months and why is this useful it is useful for fast secure high quality personalized customer service so what's the correct answer aws managed vpn and aws direct connect coming to next question 
which service supports resolution of public domains to IP addresses or AWS resources. Public domain names, the key word here. Public domain names to IP addresses. Now, what is SNS? SNS is a pub sub model of messaging. It's a notification service. It stands for simple notification service. Okay, this is the diagram. So you have a publisher who wants to publish uh, some messages on the AWS management console customer interface okay or through uh, the sdk apis and the monitoring and cloud watch uh, matrix you can check it in the aws cloud watch service so our question was regarding domain names so this is one of the option let's see why not other option now a hosted zone hosted zone is also a part if you uh, study comes under route 53 so hosted zone is a container of records and records contain information how you want to route. In this hosted zone, there are two types, public hosted zone and private hosted zone. So pu public hosted zone contain records that specify how you want to route the traffic on the internet. And what private hosted zone will do is, it will see how to route the traffic in the Amazon VPC, not on the internet. Okay, that's the difference between private and public hosted zone. Now coming to cloud front, you have seen when you uh, log in into Netflix in a different country, like suppose if I am in Germany and if I am in India, it will uh, uh, automatically your uh, Netflix will understand that, okay, now I am connected to India so I will show shows on in, uh, in Indian uh, account and if you are connected to US or some other country as I said Germany it will show the shows according to Germany uh, Germany area so how does that happen that happens because there is an nearest edge location sorry there's a nearest edge location okay that is in the form of aws cloud front okay what it does is it caches and serves the static and dynamic content when end user requests something then it will check if it has it in the nearest location in the form of cloud front if it has in the nearest edge location then it will give it to that so what happens your sir like instead of uh, you know querying the actual server it caches and it keeps it that if this query comes i will give it every cache has a ttl a time to live so according to that if the cache it's there in cache it will give it if not it will go and query the main server okay so the correct answer is we needed uh, public domain names to ip addresses so you saw right route 53 dns resolver and uh, all that concept so it the correct answer is route 53 so next which service is used to enable multi-factor authentication now let's see the services one by one now uh, security token service it helps it as it said the word says token so what it does is enables you to request temporary limited privilege credentials for limited time it gives you some credentials through which you can log in and your users can authenticate then ec2 we have seen in the last video it is a virtual computer where you can run your applications then IAM, IAM is Identity Access Management. It is a framework of policies and technologies to ensure that the right users have the appropriate access to the technology resources. So in the root account, when you create when you create a, a root account to log in inside AWS, that time when you want to enable multi-factor authentication, you use IAM service. We'll see what is KMS also. KMS is a key management system that lets you create, manage and control cryptographic keys. So the correct answer to this is AWS IAM. This is very important from the exam point of view. You will definitely have one question regarding multi-factor authentication in the exam. Next, which AWS service is primarily used for software conversion control? So Cloud9, uh, I'll not talk about, we have already seen in the earlier video that uh, it's an IDE used for, uh, used in browser IDE by given by AWS. Then Codestar. Codestar is when you provide the tools you need to de quickly develop, build and deploy applications on AWS. 
then the code deploy it automates your application deployments code commit it is a secure high scalable managed source control service that hosts private git repositories straightforward approaches okay so the correct answer is code commit why because it will control how you host and you know you're having the uh, source control in it once you commit then it will have another versions so according to that the answer is code commit next which of the following is a principle of good aws architecture design so uh, monolithic design so now what is monolithic design that you have the whole application single application for the whole project for what happens if you make a single change and that does not well work well with you so what will happen the application will crash the whole application will crash so you in it a uh, monolithic design follows tight coupling because it is tightly coupled to each other if anything fails it is the application is completely down then coming to implement single points of failure that's what aws wants to avoid that it should not have a single point of failure so it can never be a good design of aws architecture then coming to Ver uh, vertical scaling now let me explain you what is horizontal what is vertical so horizontal scaling means that you scale by adding more ec2 machines into your pool of services okay that means uh, if you are not uh, able to manage with one machine you are adding another machine if you are not a third machine fourth machine this way you are keeping on adding resources okay and what vertical scaling means is that you add more power to an existing ec2 machine like suppose you can increase the ram you can increase the vcpo limit horizontal uh, scaling combined with a loosely coupled architecture introduce uh, introduce an additional level of resiliency so what does loosely coupled architecture say it reduces the interdependencies so that uh, one change like you have microservices so one change in uh, one microservice will not affect the other like it should be independent you should have very less interdependencies so that will it will not cascade to other components failure so that is a better uh, design of aws uh, cloud architecture okay so this is it uh, we'll uh, see the further questions in the next video thank you if you have any questions uh, please let me know through the comment box and if you want me to do uh, solution architect associate questions let me know in the comment section till then stay happy let's codify with solal in the next video please like share and subscribe also hit the bell icon so that whenever i put a new video you get an update thank you